Yes, we play games to bring us some pleasure, but they get it wrong about weights and about measure. Which is fine in the game, but it becomes quite unsound when you take it as truth and you spread it around. Lauren here and uh, take a seat gather around anti danger has to complain because someone is wrong on the internet okay generally I don't care <laughs> you know people being right or wrong on the internet I know what I know I study what I study I look at the manuals I have the things in my possession I know what the truth is about arms and armor and martial arts and things like that but I'm wearing my Sphinx t-shirt today fight like a girl because we sphinxes out there we know what we're talking about we study and uh, we train and we teach and my awesome amazing friend Miranda who also is an instructor um, for where she is and guess what she also likes role-playing games and she loves to have discussions on forums about games and different things and we all like to say hey you know we can improve this or that or this might be a little bit off compared to reality because people take what they read in video games and role-playing games and see in movies and TV and they take it as truth and they try to spread it around and they will fight like hell to be right when they are most obviously wrong. And so it inspired me for this week's video because what I'm going to do is read off this list of weights, mass, height. Took out the kitchen digital scale. I weighed a bunch of things and we'll quickly go over what these things weigh. And I'm wearing a kettle helmet because we'll talk a little bit about armor as well. But our armaments, we probably do them backwards. We think that it takes a lot of strength to use swords and axes, and we think it takes a lot of dexterity to use longbows. And it really needs to be the other way around. So let's start with the dagger. How much does this weigh? 480 grams. 1.05 pounds. So it's a pound. Let's say that. Okay, Rondel Dagger, really cool. This is a Todd Stuff piece and I've done videos about it and I've featured it a lot and it is awesome. But that's it, it's a pound. What else are you gonna adventure with? Oh, maybe you're a single-handed sword, an arming sword. Uh, this is about 30 inches in length. It weighs 1,110 grams or 2.4, 2.4, 2.4 pounds. Because oh, this is my fourth recording. Uh. But we're gonna get it right this time. Okay, uh, a short sword might be 20 to 26 inches in length, past 26 to about 32, then we get a single hand sword. Yeah, two and a half pounds probably at most. Um, this arming sword that's on the wall, there it is, that one, that type 12 up there, it weighs a little bit more, it's a little bit heavy, but it's not sharpened specifically, so that would probably bring the weight down a little bit. It's a very thick, robust blade. <coughs> All right, so two pounds, if you had it listed as three, then it starts to get a little bit heavy. So I'd say two and a half pounds though. Uh, let's reach down, grab a Warhammer. Warhammers are cool, especially this dragon one. And it is 1,233 grams or 2.72 pounds, that's it. Your cleric doesn't necessarily need to be that strong in order to wield the Warhammer. The uh, mace into Zen Den Lee, 1,420 grams or 3.13 pounds. But these are strength based because the balance is towards the head, it's towards one end, the business end. It has to generate the highest amount of power to crunch and damage armor and possibly concuss or bruise or break bones of the person underneath. Not likely that you're going to get through armor, or if you do, it's just going to be a little bit, not far enough to actually dig into the opponent. But we want to crunch their armor, we want to lower their mobility, and then we grab the dagger and finish them off. So yeah, so maybe we can classify these as a bit more strength intensive, but they're not as heavy as you think. Three, not even three pounds for this really cool Warhammer. And the haft is a little bit long on this one because I made, I assembled it myself. The parts, of course, come from Todd's workshop, Todd Cutler. Okay, what else? Oh, we have to talk about the long sword. Everyone loves a long sword. So we talked about a sword for one hand. This could be used one-handed, but generally a long sword, a proper long sword, is for two hands, and the majority of techniques are for two hands. So this is a sharp long sword, 
see if we can get the whole thing in there we go nice pointy blade cross guard we're talking 10 to 12 inches of hilt grip pommel all that included 36 to 38 inches of blade at most could be as low as 34 it doesn't have to be that long but it is a lever and you fight with it like this you don't take big wild swings this is not an axe this is not for chopping wood a long sword is a finesse weapon because it is 1360 grams or 2.99 pounds it's only three pounds and the balance is close to the handle it's close to where your hands are so the blade is very fast and maneuverable so this technically is a finesse weapon even though it's a long sword but that's how you use it it's a full body mechanic type thing you're moving your feet you're moving your hands you're doing motions with your wrists and forearms more than your shoulders it is pretty cool and it's what i train and study and teach the most and i know all about it and yeah three pounds so three to three and a half pounds at most there are a few which are probably down at two to two and a half pounds they move really fast okay i'm not talking training swords i'm talking real sharp ones from history okay what else did we have um oh i did measurements of a staff so your quarter staff you know wizard's favorite uh that is 902 grams or 1.99 so two pounds that's it two pounds sturdy stave of wood six feet in length yeah two pounds uh add a spearhead to that it becomes overall 1330 grams or 2.93 pounds so spear assembled three pounds that's it so the spearhead itself only about a pound so a three pound for a spear and uh two pounds for a staff oh okay so these are light they can still be fast maneuverable weapons and they have to be and the spear is really good for thrusting so it's got to have a nimble point and you really are getting in there oh but of course what about two-handed axe oh yeah that's got to be big heavy weapon right 1783 grams or 3.92 pounds four pounds and this one's probably a little big but there we go it's about four feet in length we would say and uh you need some strength because all the weight is focused at one end because it's this big cleaving implement but still it's not as heavy as you think it's not 10 pounds it's not 15 pounds even a great sword and i don't have a real one i have a synthetic one it's hiding behind i have videos about it you can go look at it and look them up if you want but even that's going to be about five to six pounds at most right it's not going to be you're not going to go too far past three kilos on a great sword or flambergers vihanders badona montante whatever you want to call it if you're using a big sword with two hands the balance point is still near the hands and the point of the blade has to be nimble and fast and if you watch videos of those who train with it and there are some pretty cool things out there search for montante you'll see they really get good speed out of it there's a lot of dexterity involved in using a great sword it is not a hatchet it is not chopping wood it is nimbly moving fin figure eights trying to keep opponents at bay oh however this longbow that i have in the background here i didn't string it and bring it up because it's really hard to fit into frame anyway 553 grams 1.22 pounds oh okay not very heavy at all that one has a 45 to 50 pound draw weight though so the muscle power I need, I am pulling up to 50 pounds. I only pull about 45. So with my shorter arms, that's perfect for me. I have other videos where you can see me just manage to draw it. Okay. So the bow itself, fairly light, just over a pound. But that's where you need strength. So swords, daggers, a lot of weapons, you need to be nimble in order to use them. And we have all the manuals that teach us how to use them. And that's how you fight with them their finesse right a longbow needs lots of muscle power a war bow above 100 pound draw weight deforms your left forearm and your right shoulder blade with the effort of drawing them and so bows are actually strength weapons well aiming them might require some dexterity but you need strength and endurance to be able to draw that back and take the time to aim so they're really both you really need for a longbow you really should have high strength 
and good dexterity in order to loose your arrow at the target properly. Oh. Swords? Dexterity based. Bows? Five. But strength is a factor in long bows and short bows, things like that. Oh, okay. So things are kind of opposite to what the games tell us. And games are fine. You use the rules as they are. There's no problem with that. But don't take the game rules as the truth of how things work. And then constantly defend. Oh, but this. Oh, but that. We study this for a living. We do this all the time. This is more than a hobby for us. More than a passion for us. For me, it, you know, it's something that's three to four times a week. I'm out there teaching or helping teach, practicing and training. So, trust us. Okay? When it comes to the reality of things, if you want to put the reality into your game, great. You don't have to. But don't take your game and try to transpose it onto the reality and then tell us we're wrong. Because we try hard and we study and we practice and I have weighed all these things. Uh, incidentally, armor is where all the weight really comes from and what you really should be strong in order to wear. This kettle helm on my head and I'm wearing it because it's 2,806 grams or 6.18 pounds. Male shirt that I have in the background, it's only a short sleeve halberdron, it is 15 pounds. A buckler is just over two. A heater shield, like I have over there, triangle shield, is gonna be about five to six. So yeah, your armor wearing characters are the ones who need the strength. Just using the sword, it's not where the strength comes in. Anyway, friends. I recorded this is my fourth recording of this trying to get this down to a reasonable amount of time i think that i finally got it thank you for staying with me this is just an information video of me ranting and rambling because we often go through this on the internet people will ask us questions and then don't want to accept what we have trained and experienced so i figured i'd put something together just so we could get a general idea so if your games have weights and measures that come close to this stuff fantastic if they don't it's up to you whether you want to modify them or not the game is the game playing games are great they're fun but remember don't let the game inform your reality because reality is its own separate thing and game designers aren't always martial arts experts all right friends like comment subscribe all that stuff on and on it goes Please do take care, do stay safe, and please keep on swinging.